Have you ever considered the importance of remaining connected to a spiritual source? Let's delve into the metaphorical richness of John 15, where Jesus presents himself as the true vine and his followers as the branches. In this intriguing metaphor, Jesus is the vine, the source of life and nourishment, while we, his followers, are the branches. This imagery is more than just a picturesque depiction. It carries profound spiritual implications. The branch is dependent on the vine for sustenance, for growth, and for fruitfulness. Similarly, we as followers are dependent on Jesus, our spiritual vine. Now let's decipher the concept of pruning in this context. Pruning is a gardening practice where certain parts of a plant are cut off to encourage better growth. In the spiritual sense, God the gardener prunes us, the branches, to bear more fruit. It may involve cutting away the distractions, the unnecessary burdens, or the sinful habits that hinder our spiritual growth. As painful as pruning may sound, it's crucial for our spiritual health and for bearing more fruit. The essence of this metaphor lies in the phrase, Remain in me. This phrase, repeated several times in the passage, underscores the importance of maintaining a close connection with Jesus. Remaining in Jesus means abiding in His love, obeying His commands, and living a life that reflects His teachings. It's through this connection that we receive spiritual nourishment, enabling us to grow and bear fruit. But what does bearing fruit mean? Here, fruit refers to the qualities of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruits of the Spirit that we bear when we remain connected to Jesus, the vine. So let's reflect on this powerful metaphor. Are we, as branches, remaining connected to our vine? Jesus, are we allowing God, the gardener, to prune us for better growth? Are we bearing the fruits of the Spirit in our lives? Only through a strong spiritual connection can we bear the fruits of a fulfilling spiritual life. What does it truly mean to love one another? Let's delve into the heart of Jesus' command in the book of John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. Here, Jesus instructs his disciples to love one another, a love that mirrors the divine love he himself embodies. This isn't a superficial, fleeting emotion. It's a sacrificial, enduring love that requires us to put others' needs before our own. It's a love that challenges us to forgive, to serve, to uplift, and to encourage. It's a love that, despite our human flaws, allows us to reflect the divine. And there's a significant reason why we're called to exercise this love. As followers of Jesus, we're chosen. We're chosen to bear lasting fruit, to make a difference in our world. This isn't a task that we're forced into, but rather an honor, a purpose bestowed upon us by Jesus himself. So when we speak of loving one another, it's not just about warm feelings or kind gestures. It's about a deep, selfless commitment to others, reflected in our actions, our words, and our attitudes. It's about living out the love that Jesus has shown us, and in doing so, bearing the fruit that lasts. To love one another is not merely a suggestion, but a divine command with profound implications. How do we navigate a world that might not understand or even hate us for our beliefs? That's a question many of us grapple with, but we find solace in the book of John, chapter 15, verses 18 to 26. Jesus, in his infinite wisdom, warned his followers that the world might hate them. Why? Because it hated him first. This hatred is not a product of the disciples' wrongdoing, but rather a response to their divergence from the world's ways. The world hated Jesus because he testified that its works were evil. Similarly, his followers, in living out his teachings, stand as a stark contrast to the world, and thus, might face its wrath. Yet, in the face of this daunting prospect, Jesus doesn't leave his followers without hope. He promises the coming of the Advocate, also known as the Spirit of Truth. This Spirit, proceeding from the Father, will testify about Jesus. But it doesn't stop there. The disciples, too, are urged to bear witness about Jesus because they have been with him from the beginning. They are not passive recipients of the Spirit's work, but active participants in testifying about Jesus. In this, we see a beautiful symbiosis. The Spirit of Truth guides us, and we, in turn, are called to bear witness. It's not a call to an easy life. 
but it is a call to a meaningful one. A life, though it may be marked by persecution, is filled with divine assistance and purpose. Though we may face opposition, we are not alone. The Advocate is with us, guiding us to truth. What can we take away from this passage in John 15? In this profound narrative, we've uncovered three pivotal elements. First, the metaphor of the vine and branches underscores our spiritual connection to the divine. Second, the command to love one another, a testament to our shared humanity. Lastly, despite the world's hatred, we're comforted by the promise of the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth. Our spiritual connection, our love for one another, and our unwavering faith in the face of opposition, these are the threads that weave the fabric of our spiritual journey. Remember, you're not alone in this journey. The Advocate is with us, guiding us to truth.